Graphs and networks, connector problems. In this case, we're looking at minimum spanning trees. So, remember with graphs and networks, we've got a collection of vertices, points, connected by edges, or you know, lines, I guess. And they're really good for solving a lot of real life problems. Minimum spanning trees are great for things like connecting a bunch of different points with a minimum amount of, you know, whether it be road distance or pipe or whatever it happens to be. So we're just focusing on connecting all the points in a graph. A tree is a connected graph with no cycles or multiple edges or loop loops. So it's a really boring connected graph. A tree can be part of a larger graph, and there's examples in your textbook of what is and isn't a tree. A, so every connected graph does contain one or more trees. So remember, it's just you can pick out of a graph the parts that make a tree. A spanning tree connects all of the vertices in a connected graph. And a minimum spanning tree does that in the minimum possible distance. Now you can have more than one options um, that there might be two different trees within a graph that both have minimum length. And obviously this happens in a weighted graph. So here's a weighted graph and a minimum spanning tree would be the tree that connected all these vertices using the minimum distance. So it wouldn't involve every single edge in the graph. Now to find a spanning tree, a minimum spanning tree, we use Prim's algorithm and it's nice and easy. So you choose any vertex and you choose the lowest weight edges com the edge coming off it. So once you've chosen the lowest weight edge from your first vertex, you've got a second vertex to look at as well. And you look at both those vertices and choose the next lowest weight edge. In fact, we don't even need the word next there. And then you just repeat that until you've got all vertices joined. Now this is going to be much easier to see with an example. You'll usually end up redrawing your tree rather than just circling things, but we'll see how we go. So apply Prim's algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree and calculate its length. Choose any vertex. Let's choose A. And as I said, it's kind of easier to redraw your tree. Look at all the edges coming off A, 2, 5, and 6, and choose the lowest weight edge. That will be 2. So now I've got to put in B and that edge of 2. 
Now I've got A and B involved and I look at all the edges coming off A and B. 8, 6, 5 and 6. Choose the lowest weight edge out of all those four options. So that will be AD at 5. So I'll put in D. Now I've only connected three of the vertices, so I have to keep repeating this until I've got all the edges. Now that's quite a lot of edges now that we're looking at, because it's everything coming off A, B or D. So if you're getting stuck, you can start redrawing everything that's coming off A, B or D. So in all of those, what's the shortest one? It's this one here, CD. Put that one in. Now this edge is involved as well. So you are looking for what the lowest one is now. Okay, so we've got 8, 6, we've already got that 5 in, 6, 7, 6, 5. This 5 is now your lowest weighted edge, so that's C down to E. We still haven't got everything because we don't have F, and obviously the lowest weighted edge to get us to F is this one here at 2. So it's quite an easy algorithm to follow, an algorithm just being a process for how we get an answer. And that's found the shortest distance to join all the vertices in that graph. So it might not be the obvious one when you look at it as to how you would obviously join up everything with the shortest distance, but there it is. And of course, since they asked us to find the length, which show our working two five three five two seventeen. They didn't tell us what we're measuring this in. This could be I don't know time or distance in meters or kilometers or whatever. So if they didn't tell us, we just say units. So that's a minimum spanning tree.